In this video, I'll be reviewing Stam Audio's SA76 Feedback Style FET Compressor. It's a hand-assembled replica of the iconic 1967 vintage Yuri 1176 Revision A. Thank you to Stam Audio for making this review possible. They kindly sent me a compressor to review and keep, therefore this isn't an Audio Skeptic Society review. However, the SA76 will be honestly evaluated as thoroughly as possible. The 1176 Rev A, nicknamed the Blue Stripe, is perhaps the most sought after audio compressor in the world. Engineers love how it evens out audio volume levels and brings track details out with added mid-range frequencies. It even has its own Wikipedia page. 1176 style compressors are also famous for the British mode, aka the all buttons in trick, which can work well on drum room mics, bass guitars, and certain vocal styles. Vintage units will run you at least $2,000 for a fair condition unit, some of the better looking ones and better sounding ones can go for over $10,000. Stam Audio charges a little under $700 plus shipping. The SA76 front panel features input and output knobs, four ratio buttons, along with a vintage style VU meter. Meter display buttons can be found on the far right side. On the back is a power switch, fuse, and ground connector. Balanced XLR and quarter inch phone inputs and outputs round out the back panel. On Stam Audio's website, they talk about transformer replicas, Vichy capacitors, Phillips capacitors, and new old stock carbon resistors. I honestly don't know what any of that means other than those parts are combined to closely match the blueprint of the original hardware unit. But enough talking. Let's hear what this thing can do. I know the season's ripe for change It's changing all around I know the reasons you've arranged They're tearing me down Where is... I know the season's ripe for change It's changing all around I know the reasons you've arranged They're tearing me down Where is the peacefulness of mine? No, I won't do not dare! I will live in fear! Would you run laps? Maybe perhaps save a child, wrap the baby up in burlap, heard about your hustle. Try. Would you run laps? Maybe perhaps save a child, wrap the baby up in burlap, heard about your hustle. Tra Would you run laps? Maybe perhaps save a child, wrap the baby up in burlap, heard about your hustle. Try a different hustle from the
Reviewing the SA-76 was part fun and part learning experience. Prior to messing around with it, the only hardware compressors I've used were the Aphex 320D Compeller and the FMR Audio Really Nice Compressor, so I had no idea what I was getting myself into before evaluating it. The first thing I noticed is that pictures don't do this thing jealous. On a computer screen, the hardware looks really small. In person, it's three and a half inches high by 19 inches wide. It is a big piece of equipment. With the 1176 plugins that I've used over the years, the attack and release controls are their fastest at the highest number. Well, on this unit, on the SA-76, those controls are reversed. Now, Joshua, the owner of Stam Audio, said on Gear Sluts that if a buyer wants to get the controls reversed, so back to the original spec, then he can do that. Speaking of attack, the timings go from really fast to ridiculously fast. 800 microseconds is the slowest attack time, and if you consider that one microsecond is equal to one millionth of a second, that is very, very fast. The release control is a little bit more reasonable at 50 milliseconds on the fastest release time and 1.1 seconds on the slowest. Another thing I learned is to not trust the meter at all. I've heard that some engineers will actually tape over the meter or tape a piece of cardboard over the meter so that they don't get distracted by it. And that's because, again, the attack time on this is so fast that there's compression happening, but the meter's not picking up on it. So you really got to use your ears. Before unplugging the compressor from the wall, make sure that you hit that off button next to the meter. When it comes to analog hardware, it is super important to gain stage properly. So I fed it at the most a negative six decibels full scale signal going into the hardware and coming out of it back into my audio interface. I tried to not go past negative 12 decibels full scale. One trick you can do for tracks that are already recorded is to find the highest peak in your audio and play back just that section, put it on repeat, just to ensure that there's no unwanted distortion happening. One thing you can do with hardware that you can't with plugins is use two hands at once. So a couple of tricks to try out. Engineers love vocals set to the fastest release, and then you can set the attack time a little on the slow side, so a, a three o'clock on the SA-76. Normally you would do like five on the real 1176. And also the all buttons in trick, put it on fastest release and a medium attack time. Another trick to try for the default setting, the starting setting, is the attack at 10 o'clock, the release at two o'clock, and the ratio at four but on the SA-76, because it's reversed, you put the attack to two o'clock and the release at 10 o'clock. This is called the Dr. Pepper trick because an old commercial from, I don't know what time, but let's say like the 60s or 70s, they said that you start losing your blood sugar at 10 o'clock, 10 a.m., 2 p.m., and 4 p.m., so have a Dr. Pepper at that time. <laughs> One thing I noticed about this compressor over my really nice compressor is that it's just got a lot of character. It has tone shaping abilities, and I especially loved it on the kick drum. As far as what I liked it on, basically what other engineers like it on, vocals, bass guitar, drums, uh, electric guitar, especially it's distorted electric guitar. Um, I didn't really like it on keyboards. Maybe I had the settings wrong, I don't know, but I did not like it on keyboards, piano, whatever you want to call it. So uh, maybe I'll try it again sometime. And finally, one other trick you can do is to press one of the buttons in halfway so that it disengages all of the ratio buttons and then you just pass a signal through it. That way there's no compression happening, but it still has the transformers going on. People like that sound. I've heard it sounds good on a DI clean 
guitar track. I don't know, I didn't try that. I did try sending it on vocals, so it's just something to try. Also, the all buttons in trick isn't just for drums. People say, try it on vocals. I did do it on the heavy metal vocal. Um, I didn't try it on bass guitar, I don't think, but I definitely did it on drums, and on drums it sounds awesome. Okay, so I said all the things I loved about the SA-76. Now here's some of the bad. First of all, fingerprint smudges. This thing is a fingerprint magnet, and before I got the footage of the compressor, I tried using Windex on it, which I was told you can use for stainless steel, but maybe it's not stainless steel, it's brushed aluminum, so I, I don't know. But whatever the material is, the fingerprint smudges would not come off. Secondly, there are sharp edges. Now, if your gear is racked, if this thing is racked, then that's not gonna be a problem, but I've actually cut my head on the uh, Delta 1010 for the same reason. So if the edges of the unit could be rounded off in some way, that would be nice, but uh, again, this is nitpicking. So the big question, if you already have an 1176 Blue Stripe plug-in, would it be worth it to buy the hardware? And my answer is complicated, because number one, we're talking about budgets. If you have a lot of money, I say go for it, buy one of these things. You'll love it, trust me, you'll love it, it'll look nice in your rack, and you'll have fun with it, all right? But if your budget's tight, that's where, I, I don't know if I could, re I could recommend it, but it is something to save up for because I do think workflow wise, if you compress on the way in with this, it'll save you some time while mixing. Um, I do believe you can shove more gain reduction with real hardware compressors over digital ones. Um, I haven't tested every single plugin that's out there, but that's my gut feeling is that you can get a lot, you can get more gain reduction. How much more gain reduction? I don't know, but I, I know you can get, you can squeeze a little bit more out than with ones and zeros with, with uh, audio plugins. Now some downsides to hardware is that you have to process your files in real time. When I made all the files for this video, I had to sit there for the length of the song and play it through the hardware and then go on to my next mix. And you know, I can't like, unless I take a picture of the hardware, I can't later on go back and redo something. So that's one thing to be aware of. Recall is an issue. And also it uses 10 watts of electricity, which is less than some LED light. So that really shouldn't be that big of a deal, but it's something to be aware of. Also hardware breaks down just like computer hardware can. So that's something that plugins don't do. Although plugins do become obsolete audio hardware. As long as you have an XLR cable or a quarter inch cable, <laughs> you'll be good. If you are recording with this hardware, I recommend the four to one ratio with the slowest attack time. Release time, I'd probably put on the 12 o'clock position, but you know, that's up to you. Would I recommend buying it? Absolutely, look, if you wanna get the real deal, it's gonna cost you at least two grand. For $700, a little under $700 plus shipping and handling, you can get something that sounds awesome. Doesn't sound like a real 1176 revision A. I wish I could answer that for you. I can tell you just from based on its own merits, not knowing what the real deal sounds like, never working with the real deal. I like it. I, I like what it did to my audio. When I do some serious mixes, I'm going to pull it out and I'm going to run audio through it. When I get an audio interface that has insert points, I will record with this compressor. So again, it comes down to what is your budget, what is important, and you know, yes, I do think your audio will be improved having this compressor, but whether or not it's worth it to you, it, again, is up to your budget. Um, you know, that's really what it boils down to. I personally, after, after listening to it, had Stam not, you know, said, hey, just keep it, I would have said, I'm gonna save up $700 and eventually buy one of these or the LA-3A that they're gonna be putting out in a, a month or so. Um, Cause I really love the LA-3A, as you guys know, if you've ever seen past videos, it's basically a more program dependent 1176. And now I have a real one and that's awesome. And again, thank you to Stam Audio for that. I really was expecting to have to, to ship this back to South America, but um, it's so cool that I get to have one of these myself. 
And, um, you know, eventually when I get a rack, it'll look nice in the rack. And uh, there's really not much else I can say other than I really like the sound. And um, just, again, check out the audio demos. There's other videos that I made where I tweak the knobs in real time so you guys can see what it sounds like there. But um, there's not much else to say. This has been Adam for realhomerecording.com. Send me an email, news at realhomerecording.com so you don't miss a single Real Home Recording video. You can also hit the bell notification, although you're not guaranteed to see every single video released that way. You got to get on the newsletter and add news at realhomerecording.com to your address book so that it doesn't go into the spam folder. Again, thanks for watching. This has been Adam.